Where is this pressure coming from all of a sudden? Well, I think there are two main macroeconomic factors which I would say are causing um, a lot of the selling pressure. So the first is inflation. We had the CPI data come out last week and inflation is actually much higher than expected. It was 8.3%. It's only at 8.2%. So still a lot higher than expected. Um, and so what we're seeing is that inflation clearly is not cooling off anytime soon. And so people simply don't have that surplus cash to start putting into um, simply just to invest. Um, they don't have that surplus cash to invest. They really need to be putting that into everyday living. Um, and then as a result of inflation, we're now expecting the Fed to start to increase interest rates. And this is expected to be the highest increase in 40 years. And when that happens, obviously that strengthens the dollar, but then it means that alternative asset classes, risk on assets like Bitcoin right. um, do tend to um, start to be sold. So this, this sort of 18,000 level, uh, you know, the first time we got here, a lot of folks who love Bitcoin, by the way, said it wasn't going to hold. And people talked about it going as low as 10,000. Is that a possibility for, in your mind? I think anything is possible, but ultimately I do like to look at historical data. So on the last bull market, we saw um, Bitcoin crash 80%. So if we were to go by that data, I would say I would expect an 80% um, correction, which would take us down to around $13,000, $14,000. So for me, that could be the bottom that's very likely. Um, $10,000, there'd have to be some kind of black swan event like we saw with COVID back in March 2020. Um, but it's also important to uh, consider the support levels that we have, because there is a support level between between $14,000 to $15,000, which again would make sense to go back down to um, that $13,000 and $14,000 level, which would be that 80% retracement. So 10 is likely, anything is likely, right, but right. I think more likely would be 13, 14. I, I, before I let you go, I gotta ask you about this. There was so much hype over this Ethereum merge, uh, and then it happened and the whole thing sort of landed like a thud, the old Wall Street buy the rumor, sell the news, I guess. But now some are saying it's a better value proposition than Bitcoin because of the power consumption or lack thereof. Do you buy that? Not at all. I think that's actually really intellectually lazy. I don't know why people always keep saying this. People always ignore the fact that Bitcoin is um, proof of work, which basically means it can be mined from anywhere in the world. So miners are literally incentivized to seek out cheaper, inexpensive, wasted energy. Now, a lot of the time, um, major power plants are built for the demands of energy in 20 years from now. And so Bitcoin miners can swoop in and use that already existing infrastructure to mine Bitcoin, which is um, cheaper and greener better for the environment. The trade-off with, with Ethereum and going to proof of stake, which is basically what that merge is, means that it's a little bit like the fiat system, whereby the more money you have, the more ETH you hold, the more power you have over the network. Mm. And I don't really like that very much. That's very centralized. And that's why Bitcoin is created, was created to have a decentralized network whereby it doesn't matter how much money you have, you're not in control of the governance and the system. So remember, Bitcoin literally allows miners right. to seek out cheaper renewable energy. And that is the most important point. Right now, 57% of Bitcoin mining actually uses renewable energy. All right. So I'm going to put you down as a still, still pondering on Ethereum. Not sure just yet. <laughs> Maybe. Leah, thank you very much. Appreciate it.